Okay, first of all, I want to talk a little bit about crowd simulation. What is crowd simulation and why we are learning this technique? In the early history of production, and when I'm saying early history, I mean like 15 years or earlier, when an artist or a company have a crowd shots on their hands, they don't have much of a choices. There are particularly two kinds of techniques and other solutions that are hybrid between those techniques. Digital duplicating and particle instancer. Digital duplicating, depending on shooting an actor or a bunch of actors into a group, and then uh, duplicate those shots in order to create uh, this crowd. And particle instancer, depending on uh, placing a 3D character for each particle within a particle system, and then simulate those particles in a way that gives an illusion that there's a 3D crowd that's standing or moving on a 3D space. But these two techniques, although uh, we are still using them uh, as a standard method to uh, work with the crowd shots, has its own limitations. For example, on digital duplicating, you cannot go with a dramatic camera around the crowds, for example, otherwise it will turn out that it's just a 2D card with the footage on it. And on 3D instancers, uh, the characters keep penetrating and keep sliding on the terrain. Uh, the motion looks fake because it is fake. So after that, a new technique emerged, uh, which is crowd simulation. And that technique depends on giving each character a specific attribute, a specific uh, properties, in order to give it a specific behavior, so it looks real and deal with other characters and with the environment uh, in a realistic way. And Massive Prime is a tool that goes even further with that by giving each character an artificial intelligence, which we're going to refer uh, from now on as AI. And with that AI, each character can behave with a great individuality and great intelligence. Uh, and the result will be a crowd shot that looks absolutely realistic. So let's see what Massive Prime has to offer. Okay, this is Massive. And as you first can notice, uh, the user interface looks a little bit empty and poor. But that's not the truth. It looks empty because we didn't load or create anything on Massive yet. And it looks poor because Massive is not about fancy menus and flashing buttons. It's about creating your own function with your own hands. And actually, that's the power about Massive. So let's see what we got. Let's go here to this menu. If I press this button here, you will find four options, each refer to a, a specific workspace. And we're going to call each workspace page. For example, I'm now on the scene page. If I press here on body, I will shift to body page. And as you can notice, each page has its own uh, different nodes. And that depends on the function of this page. If I go down here, I'll switch to brain page. And of course, we are going to talk about each page uh, later. If I go here to motion, this is a motion page and uh, we have also a different nodes. And as you can notice, uh, even the menu here can get a little bit difference between each page. Okay, let's get back to the same page. I can switch between uh, the pages uh, without the need to go to this menu by simply using uh, uh, the page up, page down buttons on the keyboard. Okay, I'll go new. Okay. Okay, as I said earlier, uh, Massive looks a little bit empty, so let's fix that by simply loading an agent. I'll go to File, Load Agent. This is RAT. This is an agent I created earlier. I'll select it and press Open. I have a couple of uh, warning messages. I'll ignore it by pressing OK. And as you can see, it's a rat. Okay. First of all, you will notice that instantly on my scene page, a couple of nodes appeared. An agent node and a group node. And those will present this agent. And if I switch to other pages, like uh, body page or brain page, I will find that it's all filled with the elements of that agent. Except the motion page. I didn't create any motion tree for this agent. So let's get back to my scene page. And uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, the viewport. We got this one viewport on Massive. And the viewport uh, will present by the camera that you already selected. For example, I'll select camera 1 here. If I select camera 2, it will be a different viewport. 
If I select camera 3, it's also a different viewport, camera 4 also. So once I select a camera, I will see through this camera on this viewport. Okay, let's see what we got. Let's see how we can navigate through that viewport. If I press the left mouse button and drag, I will go orbiting around my agent. If I click drag the right mouse button, I'll go zoom in, zoom out. And the mid mouse button will give me the pan. If I want to go orbiting uh, around uh, a different center of view, for example, I'm orbiting here around the agent itself, but let's say I want to orbit around a different center of view, this point, for example. I'll press Alt and click on that point with the left mouse button, and then Massive will switch to this point as a center of orbiting. Now let's say I have an army, for example, and I want to uh, see a shot that exposes the entire army, and then I want to... Uh, get back to a specific uh, soldier, specific agent. If I start zooming out to see the entire army, so I'll start doing this for a while to see the entire army, and it will probably be a huge army, so I won't be able to see it all. And the uh, same thing about panning. If I want to start panning in a long range, I have to go like this. And in our business, you need to save time. So if you press Ctrl while you're dragging with the right mouse button, You will zoom in and out very, very fast. Same thing for banning. If you press Ctrl with a middle mouse button, this is the normal speed. If you press Ctrl with a middle mouse button, you will move and pan very quickly. Now let's say I lost my agent someplace on this uh, 3D space. All you have to do is press Alt Shift V and the camera will snap back to a selected agent. Now, if I want to change from a shaded mode to a wireframe mode, I'll go to View. I'll find the, this shaded option checked on. Uh, I'll turn it off, and the view will turn uh, to wireframe mode. Let me check it on again. And if I wanted to change between skeleton mode and geometry mode, I can switch skeleton on from the view also. Skeleton has appeared. It looks funny, actually. It looks more cartoonish. <laughs> And I can uh, uncheck the geometry to hide the mesh. And that way I will have only the bones. And these techniques are good if you want to do some testing and uh, you don't want the scene to be very heavy. Okay, I'll go back and switch my uh, skeleton off and geometry on. And there's a shortcut for that. I can press uh, Alt-M to switch between uh, the geometry and the skeleton. And I can press Alt-S to switch between wireframe and shaded mode. I can go uh, with the wireframe mode and the skeletal mode to uh, make the pressure on the GPU uh, as minimum as I can. And that way I can do a lot of testing very easily. Okay, let's get back to geometry mode. It's much more interesting. Now if I want to test this agent, if I want to play the brain that it has, I can go to the Run menu and uh, press Go. And the agent is running. This agent has one action on it, which is Run. It's running far away. And if I want to stop it, I'll go to Run and uh, uncheck Go. And it will stop here. And then I will go again to Reset to get it back where it was. And the shortcut for that, because we're not going to use this menu, is Press Bar to play. And Space Bar again to stop and Alt-R to reset. Now if I'm testing the agent and I press the space bar, it's going very far away now. I, I can't see what it's doing. Maybe I can follow it like that, but it just won't work. So I'll stop it and press uh, Alt-Shift-V and it catches a specific pose at a specific place. But I don't want it like that. I want to be able to follow it wherever it goes and whatever it done. So I'll press Alt-R again and Alt-Shift-V now I'll press the space bar, and here it goes, and then I'll press Alt-F. And when I do that, the camera that I choose will follow the agent wherever it goes. And actually I can do a little bit of zooming and orbiting around, and the camera will keep following the agent. This is actually a very handy technique uh, in order to keep watch watching the agent and uh, see how it's behaved. I'll press space bar and Alt-R again. 
And finally, the last thing I want to talk about in this lesson is uh, the grid size. You're normally going to adjust this grid size uh, from this option here based on the scale of your agent. Here the agent is uh, small, so we probably won't need to do that. But probably uh, the agent will be large or uh, your unit will be different. So you can make your grid size uh, larger, let's say 16,000, much better. And you can change uh, the grid spacing if you want. And that can be benefit if you want to see if your agent is doing any sliding or anything wrong. Uh, let's make it 50, for example. And press accept. Okay. Now in the next lesson, we are going to go even further with the user interface.